going to spill some theories. Are you ready for yet another theory spill? I sure am. Quick reminder that this video contains spoilers. If you haven't played any of the Little Nightmares games, I suggest you look away. You have been warned. Also, these gameplays aren't mine. All rightful owners have been linked down below. Alright, hope you enjoy the video. The trailer for Little Nightmares 3 has been out for 4 months now. Two months ago, Bandai Namco released an 18 minute video showing us the very beginning of Little Nightmares 3 taking place in the first chapter called the Necropolis. Today we will be looking at parts of the gameplay and parts of the trailer I found interesting and I will also reveal the links I made between Little Nightmares 3 and other Little Nightmares related content. Right from the beginning, a hint is given to us about the upcoming antagonist, a pacifier. The gameplay goes on to show the main entity controlling this specific chapter, which will be the monster baby. This nemesis has a more than familiar attack mechanism, which is the eye. Just like in the first Little Nightmares game, the baby has the capacity to turn anyone she looks at to stone with her flashlight eyeball. All around the deserted city, we get to see the people who used to inhabit it, frozen in multiple positions and also missing limbs. Here, we have our first very obvious link. If this monster was created by somebody, we now know that this somebody has certain links with the maw and with eyes in general. Logically, this somebody and the monster baby could be the sources of what happened in the past to this deserted city. Continuing on the theme of eyes, we also see multiple eye symbols in this 18 minute gameplay. We get to see a huge abandoned tower with a massive eye on it. There are also eyes on the floor and on top of doors, just like on the mainland in Little Nightmares 2 and on the mall in Little Nightmares 1. On another note, one weird aspect I found very interesting about this adversary are her hands. Her hands are shown multiple times. The moment I saw them, it immediately reminded me of something very familiar. Going back to the Little Nightmares comic, most specifically the sixth, we get to see a huge hand kidnap a bunch of kids trying to escape a burning room. Possible link here? Hmm, comment what you think. On my end, I'm not too convinced they are the same entity. But, in all fairness, this is the only being we know so far that is this big to begin with. Most enemies in Little Nightmares are bigger than the player, but not as big as the hand shown in this comet. Well, I stumbled on this concept art. This is from the scraps of Little Nightmares 2. We see a huge baby standing in ruins of the Pale City. This could indicate that the huge doll has already been to the mainland where this comic takes place. Mirrors are a returning theme. In Little Nightmares 1, they took a huge place in the very last chapter. Tons were found around the lady's quarters and one was used to defeat her. In the DLC, the runaway kid gets to see the lady's deformed face through one. She then shatters it after spotting him looking. From the Little Nightmares comic series, a mirror capable of distorting one's appearance exists. It hides a menacing entity seemingly living inside the mirror. From the new Sounds of Nightmares podcast, Noon requests that a mirror is put in front of her in order to recall her nightmare. And now, in Little Nightmares 3, mirrors are used by Lo to get around the spiral, acting like some type of portal. And of course, this game's foe seems to inhabit a mirror. It is seen at the end of the trailer and on the game's poster. This foe appears to mainly be black smoke. Similar smoke we get to see in Little Nightmares 1, after Six defeats the lady. It also appears at the very end of the introduction gameplay video whilst Lo and Alone are on what seems to be a hospital bed in a padded cell. We get to see the lights flickering in a similar manner. Could it be Six? On another note, the first moments of the promotional gameplay video shows Lo and Alone exiting a mirror that led to the spiral. I was very intrigued on how we get to see where they came from. I did a little digging and look at this. Oh. 
Does this maybe mean that both characters came from the Maw? Perhaps they were children that ended up on the Maw just like Six. There is also a room in the trailer that resembles the gnome's hideout from the Little Nightmares DLC, The Hideaway. Although the floor is kind of different, but it still interests me a lot. The name given to this game's location hides a lot of secrets. The name The Spiral is not as random as it seems. First off, the necropolis is filled with lots and lots of gears and cogwheels. Their infinite circular motions do hint off the feel of spirals. Not only those, but many windmills are seen close by, also mimicking the circular motions accompanied by spiral pillars in this scene. In the main concept art, a ferris wheel will probably also make an appearance, most likely in another chapter called the Funfair. Again, this attraction also rotates and concords with the spiral theme. Near the middle of the 18 minute gameplay, there is a visible spiral made out of fetters near a stone corpse. Later on in the game, a chapter consists of a candy making factory. Lots of candies are visible on the floor, in boxes, and in stacks, one of those candies being lollipops. It's no surprise to most of you that most lollipops are drawn with their signature spiral. Maybe lollipops will play a bigger role in this upcoming game. How? Well, who knows. But their pattern and this location's name probably aren't coincidences. Continuing on the topic of lollipops, one link I was able to notice is roaming near the lollipop kid. In the fourth Little Nightmares comic, the young boy is seen defending himself in the school from the second game with a pink and red lollipop. Throughout the whole comet, he never lets go of that lollipop. Perhaps he's a possible escapee from the spiral. One of the new small enemies we will be seeing in this game are beetles that inhibit the necropolis. The first thing that hit me was their size. That's when I remembered about the mutated insects we get to see all throughout the first and second Little Nightmares games. Lots of pictures and concept art show these huge moths, mites, and another insect called grubs. In Little Nightmares 2, a secret room hides many cages containing mutated animals and mutated insects. Perhaps something in the Little Nightmares world causes these types of mutation. At first, I was positive it was the transmission from the second game, but since we get to see a new type of mutated insect in the third game, this suggests otherwise. Well, it looks like we've reached the end of this theory video. I am seriously so hyped for this game and I can't wait for some more trailers to drop. As any Little Nightmares fan, I do worry about the storyline considering a brand new studio is working on this game. But from what we can see, the game does look super familiar to the old ones. It truly gives off Little Nightmares vibes and we can already tell that this game will be very epic. So, what do you think? Once again, this is purely based on what I believe and what I research. You always have room to decide what you believe is true and what isn't. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe and comment on some of your theories. Take care and I will see you guys soon for more theory spells.